one for many people, for as many people as possible to have that kind of scholarship and that would be the real compliment to him. That would be the real memorial. Someone asked me, what is the condition of the teaching of English in India, in Bihar in particular? I said, Meri tijarat ka kuch na poochye. Meri tijarat ka kuch na poochye. Aina bejta hu andho ke shahar mein. Kab tak aina hum log andho ke shahar mein bejte rahenge? Dr. Sinha ko compliments pay kije. Try to have the kind of achievement that you represent. Now, about the topic. I, this, I first of all show my gratitude to the department for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on this topic by way of my compliments to Dr. Sena. The topic as you know is Ancient India's Search for Identity and for its suitable language. Search for identity. You might wonder what is this search for identity? The search for identity is who we really are. There was a time when I was a small boy. I was a student. I became married. I became a father, I am a brother, I became a teacher, I am lecturing to you. Are these my identities in the world? There is something in me, that me, which never changed. What is that me? What is that me in all of you? You see, I will start with mentioning to you a legend in the life of Lord Buddha. Angli Mal, you might have heard of him. Angli Mal was a <coughs> big murderer, Don in the language today. He wanted to have a garland of 1,000 fingers. He killed a person, cut one of his fingers, and made a kind of pearl in his garland. Now, when Lord Buddha heard of him, he wanted to meet him. And when he was going ahead, Angli Mal said, Hey, stop! And Buddha said, I stopped a long time ago. Now it's for you to stop. And then he said, What kind of mad person is he? Who are you? He said, I am the same as you are. And Angli Mal said, I am the same as you are. He thought, maybe he will have another accomplishment. He will have someone to support him in his job of killing people. And then, this was the starting point. The point was, I know who you are. Buddha knew who he was. Buddha was a prince. He became a monk, that was not him. Another no, small story. There was a saint called Eknath in Maharashtra. Once he was passing by, some people were beating a person. He said, hey, what are you doing? Why are you beating him? They said, he borrowed money and never returned it to us. So he said, okay, I don't have the money, so I cannot pay the money to you. Start beating me instead of him. He said, what kind of person are you? Who are you? And how is he related to you? He said, I am the same person as he is. I am the same person as you are. We are essentially the same. Our names are different. Our faces are different. We look different. What? But we are all essentially the manifestation of the same spirit. We are all the same. 
This is a question of identity. Our ancient seers wanted to find out who the human beings really were. They would be human beings are human beings, but not thought. That's not enough. Who are we? What are we really? Now, before I try to share with you my understanding of what these sages and seers in ancient India thought about the real human identity, I'll tell you something about what the people in the West during the last few hundred years have told us about our identity. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Among the Devarshis I am Narada, among the Maharshis I am Bhrigu, among the Siddhas I am Kapil. Now Kapil, Bhrigu and Narada, were the three great opinion makers in ancient India, it seems. The three great opinion makers in the world of today, during the last 300, the 200 years, were Darwin, Sigmund Freud, and Karl Marx. They have been telling us Time and again, again and again, again and again, who we really are. What did Darwin tell us? He said, you are all animals. Your father was an animal. Your ancestors were all animals. Essentially, even now, you are animals. So, according to Darwin, this was our identity. We are animals. And, you see, there was a time when someone in the United States taught Darwin in his school and he had to pay a fine of $150. Darwin was so much discarded. But Darwin became the greatest intellectual of the age. There were textbooks, there were researches, there were journals, there were books. And everybody started believing that what Darwin said was really right. We are animals. Our fathers were animals. Our ancestors were animals. We are nothing but animals. You see, there was a surrealist painter in America, I said, let us never forget, mark the word, let us never forget that the greatest man is never more than an animal disguised as a god. He said, not only you, the greatest man, for him Christ was an animal, Buddha was an animal, we are all animals. This was Darwin. And scholars, painters, dancers, Filmmakers, textbook writers, teachers, students, researchers, they all started believing in what Darwin had to say. Here is Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, man was created a bloody animal. Bloody animal. This was our identity, according to them. Man was created a bloody animal, and I think he will always thirst for blood, and will manage to have it. I think he's far and away the worst animal that exists and the only untamable. You know that. But, Russell, you know, one of the greatest scholars of the last 100 years, he said, it has been said that man is a rational animal. The emphasis was not on rational, the emphasis was on the word animal. That man is a rational animal. All my life I have been searching for evidence that could support this. Is it rational? No. Man is an animal and nothing more than an animal. Now, this was Darwin. The other person, the other great scholar, well, whether I call him a scholar or not, 
You see, Karl Marx was certainly a very highly talented person. So was Darwin. And so was Sigmund Freud. What did Karl Marx say about our identity? He said, I quote, the human being is in the most literal sense, most literal <coughs> sense, not metaphorically speaking, in the most literal sense, a political animal. Hmm. The emphasis was not on the word political, the emphasis again was on the word animal. Man is an animal. And if you look at some of the politicians these days, you will uh, see to agree <laughs> that perhaps he was right. Man is a political animal. <laughs> Sigmund Freud, again, a great scholar. I certainly highly talented person. He came with his discovery on sex. And what he said was, said was, man was nothing but a demon starving for sex. Sex was for him the greatest reality. And we were nothing. The human generation is nothing. It's the generation of sexualists. This is not me. I have quotations here. And can you believe it? Now, Sigmund Freud became part of textbooks, part of PhD researches, part of DLIP, part of PhD. And Sigmund Freud again became part of the thinking of the common man. And look at the quotation that I am giving you. Here is someone in America saying, the more perfect a person is on the outside, the more demons they have on the inside. If you are look perfect, you are a better demon. And look at this. Someone said, sex is the best high. It is better than any drug. I want, mark these words, I want to die making love because it feels so good. <laughs> this was. And this is the, they rubbed us, they rubbed it in, in all of us. You are a sexualist, you are an animal, you are an animal. You may not agree with me, but some of the heinous crimes being committed in India and in the rest of the world are probably a result of this. You will say, people haven't even heard the name of Sigmund Freud. They, even heard, they haven't heard the name of Karl Marx. They haven't heard the name of Darwin. How can you say that the crimes they committed is the outcome of what these scholars say? You see, the mills in Kanpo emit carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. People all around, farmers who don't know what carbon monoxide is, what carbon dioxide is, they get polluted. Okay. Now this is what has happened. People have started realizing in the inner core of their mentality, we are animals. And if we are animals, what's wrong in our doing this? Now this is what the three eminent opinion makers during the last few hundred years has made us believe we are animals. That's our identity. But my job is not to tell you what Karl Marx or Darwin or Freud had to say. My job is to draw your attention to what the ancient sages and seers said about our identity. They said, this is what the Upanishad say, I am Brahmasmi, I am a spark of divinity, I am not an animal. I am Brahmasmi, I am Brahma, I am a spark of divinity. I am divinity embodied and there is 
A very good verse in the Gita which says, just as fire is covered with smoke, just as a mirror is covered with dust, just as in the womb of a mother the fetus is covered by jelly-like substance, that spark of divinity in us is surrounded by a veil of ignorance. And all that we have, if you want to find out our real identity, if you want to find out who we really are, remove that veil of ignorance. Kabir Das said, Gunga 